percent in pre-opening. Sonal was telling us about how uh, the margins. There's a big fall in the GRMs this time around. Uh, so that's uh, you know going to be a big loser today. But Ekta is also standing by to talk about Glen Pharma and Glenmark and why she's watching that. Ekta. Thanks for that. Well, yes, I'll start with Gland Pharma. That stock is going to be in focus on account of its numbers. And it was a disappointing set of numbers, at least in terms of the margins for Gland this quarter. Revenue was down 3%. Yes, the street was anticipating around a 9%. Uh, sorry, revenue... Uh, was down 9%. The street was anticipating a 9% decline. It was down 3%. Margins 28.4%. Street was anticipating around 31 to 32%. And the profit estimate was lower also. Uh, the street was anticipating around 250 crores in terms of profit. So while there was a Q1Q recovery, the year-on-year -year performance um, you know, was a bit subdued, at least especially in terms of the margins. Core markets, which is 75% of the business, was up 3% year-on-year. India was down 42%. Remember, it was down 70% last quarter as well. And that was because of reasons such as a high base supply issues that the company was facing. But what is supporting the stock is the net cash continues to remain high. Plus, as well as the valuations, considering that the stock is already down 45% from its 52-week high. Brokerages such as Bernstein, Goldman have cut their target price. Jefferies has downgraded the stock to hold. Now, Glenmark is in, is in focus because their Buddy facility has received an import alert from the US drug regulator. So that is negative news. While Buddy does not contribute that much in terms of US sales, 1 to 2% in FY22, the overall sentiment is negative for Glenmark, considering that it is going to be a long road ahead for them to resolve this import alert. And generally, Glenmark has always had a very strong regulatory track record. So this would def definitely be a chink in their armor. Oh, that's part, that, point, that point is taken. Thank you very much, uh, Ekta. The other stock which should be on your radar uh, should be Dabur, uh, not only for the results, but of course for them spicing up with Bacha. Uh, Mangalam, uh, give us all the details you have. Well, not so much for the results. Dabur will definitely be in focus on account of the Badshah acquisition. They've gone ahead and acquired 51% in Badshah spices for about 587 odd crores. This values the company a little over 1100 crores. 49% uh, of the shareholding will be acquired in five years from now. The deal is done at just under five times FY23 earnings and 20 times FY23 EV to EBITDA, which means that Badshah works at a 23% margin with 256 crore in terms of sales. But that's not as important as the fact that 82% of their sales coming from blend spices which are a high gross margin product and secondly this makes uh, Dabur's entry into the 25,000 crore organized branded spices market which is growing extremely fast and importantly you know what Dabur can do with their distribution scale is something we need to watch out for the company said that this will be EPS neutral in their first year and accretive from year two Dabur as a stock should also be in focus because after they've given their second quarter update which was weak the stock is corrected about 15 percent and it's trading at around 40 times FI 24 earnings which is at a bit of a discount to the sector as well. Goldman Sachs has written on this. They've said that this acquisition will significantly boost their kitchen condiments ambition, which the company has about 500 crores in terms of a target for. And the key risk, however, is a sharp slowdown in rural demand as well as some competitive intensity in the health foods category. Be that as it may, they're positive on the stock with a target price of 680 rupees. Okay, thanks for that. Getting me a bit hungry there, but the market is opening, so we have other things to focus on.